Well, timbering is a job. If you do it, you got to love it. You, you just can't do that job if you don't dearly love to do it. It's dangerous. It's hard. Trees are unpredictable. You've got what you call the Widowmaker. It's known in the in woods as a tree, a dead branch, something hanging up there when it falls, it's going to kick you. So that's called the Widowmaker. And when you were growing up, You'd ask me how my day was, and I'd say, well, I managed to outrun the old demon that day, and the old demon was the Widowmaker. It's not a job for a lot of people. It's dangerous, and there's a hundred different ways you can get killed. Oh, I've, I've took some hard hits. <laughs> the uh, scars on my forehead where the lines intersect, cracking skull by a limb. I think my mom calculated one time I'd had like 50 broken bones in my time in the woods. I've really literally taken a, a thorough beating out in the woods. <laughs> there just wasn't, wasn't a whole lot of the boys that I know of went to college. Your opportunities was coal mining, timbering, truck driving, welder mechanics, something along that line. And uh, I really don't think, for the most part, it would have done us any good, <laughs> to tell you the truth. And, and a lot of guys that I grew up with, they worked for their dad. And uh, you just picked up family you know, business or occupation, and that's what you did, you went to work. You know, the generations of the family have logged, and uh, I'll be the last in the direct lineage, you know, of logging. And it's, it's really hard to give it up and see the family business go away. And uh, it's, it's something I've really taken to heart. You know, I've, I've got the, you know, my ancestors, they're all dead except Cleon. My dad, my granddad, and all of them's gone now. And it just feels like it, uh, I'm the last flag bearer, <laughs> you know, to carry the banner. And so uh, it, it's, it's gonna be really tough to say, this is it, I gotta, I gotta give it up. I was uh, brought up, you know, not to, not to take nothing, you know. If you want something, you bought it. So I didn't have any money with me. And uh, went two or three days, you know, didn't have a lot to eat. And uh, my granddad ran into him. He said, have you eaten? I said, no. And he said, uh, let's go to the Red Cross and get something to eat. I said, Granddad, don't have any money. He said, it's all right, they'll give it to you. And we stayed over there, and uh, Granddad's car was parked down there. And I could go till I couldn't, couldn't go no more. And I'd go in there and uh, sleep in the back seat of his car for a little bit. And I remember one night it was so intensely cold, and I was freezing and chilling. And uh, then they announced that the men in that group were coming out. And uh, Cleon, he come, and I had a hunting jacket on my dad had bought me. And he come over and he slapped me on the back. And uh, that handprint was on that jacket for years. So, you know, that, uh, that was a learning experience, you know, for me. And it hit hard because, you know, Cleon, once he got out of the mines, he swore he would never go back to work in the mines. But he was out like a year, more than a year, and he decided he had to go back to work in the mines to feed his family. So, whenever, when you're in West Virginia and you've grown up, it doesn't matter if your family's in coal mining or not, it always hits on. And uh, it, uh, it was good to see those men come out of the mountain alive. I wanted you to have a much better life than I did. I really did. I, uh, I know when you were small and uh, there was a full moon out and I looked in to check on you and you, just, you were laying there asleep and you just, your face like an angel. And I said, Lord, I said, I don't care what you do with me, but I said, give her, you know, a much better life than I've had, a much easier life. 
I mean, uh, um, I said, take care of her, Lord. And I pray, yes, I pray. Dirt of mine.